Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll be taking you through all the core rules that you'll need to know to play your first game of Rogue Warriors, the Modern Warfare Tabletop Skirmish Game. You can find out how to assemble a team of warriors and also how to design a mission in some of the other videos I've put together in the series. But in this video, we're going to focus on the core rules. So let's get started. And the first thing you're going to need is a battlefield. The recommended size is 36 inches by 36 inches, but you can also play on a smaller 24 by 24 inch or the popular 22 by 30 inch. Once you've got your battlefield area laid out, you're going to need some terrain, and this plays a massive part in Rogue Warriors. We certainly recommend using lots of buildings and structures to block the line of sight, and add lots of scatter terrain as well to bring it to life and give your warriors plenty of opportunities for cover. It's a good idea to try and find buildings your warriors can move inside of, but if you don't have any, don't worry. Just when they enter a building, remove it from the play area and play directly on the map or gaming surface. Once you've got your terrain and your gaming surface ready to go, you're also going to need a measuring tape or a gauge. You'll need some six-sided dice, at least six to 12. Then you're going to need some tokens. We like to use dice for the hearts, pins and activations. And using different coloured dice is a great way to do that. You're also going to want something to use as objective markers. These can be anything from dice to really cool miniatures like we've got here. A scatter dice is helpful as well, as is a blast template. Then you're going to need some models to play with, and you're going to need 4 to 10 models for each player. In the core game, each player takes 4 elite warriors into battle. You'll need a few more when you play campaign mode. And finally, you're going to need team mission sheets for every mission. Now let's look at the key concepts of the game. And in Rogue Warriors, we use a D6 dice. That'll be written as 1D6, 2D6, and so on. Sometimes, though, you'll be asked to roll a D3. And here, you'll roll a D6 and use the following results. A result of 1 to 2 is going to be a 1, 3 to 4, a 2, and 5 to 6, a 3. You may also be asked to roll a D2. And here, a 1 to 3 is a 1, and a 4 to 6 is a 2. Anytime you roll a natural one, that's an epic failure that we call a foobar. If it's on target though, with a natural six, it will be an automatic success. Now let's look at roll-offs, and these are used to decide who goes first or to settle a disagreement. Whoever rolls the highest is the winner, and if it's a tie, simply roll off again. Sometimes you'll be able to re-roll a result, and once it's re-rolled, that new result is final. And note, you cannot re-roll a re-roll. Let's move on to distance and measurements now, and all distances are measured in inches, written by a number, followed by the double quote symbol. Measurements for moving your warriors are taken from the front of the base to the front of the base, moving along the path the warrior would move. If a weapon has a range of zero, the models must be in base contact to make an attack with that weapon. If a warrior's base is less than one inch above the other model, but their bases would be in contact if they were on the same level, then they are said to be in base contact. When we measure range, the measurements between models are taken from the closest base edge of one warrior to the closest base edge of another warrior. If one warrior is higher than the other, always measure the diagonal distance. And to be in range, part of the attacking warrior's base must be within the range measurement of the target warrior's base. That's movement covered, now let's look at actions. And during each warrior activation, you will choose one action package and carry out the actions within it. The actions may be carried out in any order. There are five core action packages to choose from, and let's start with package one, which is move and shoot. Package 2, the warrior will move and then make a melee attack. In package 3, the warrior may move and run, and when they run, they can move an additional 1d6 inches. Package 4, the warrior will aim and shoot. This means they can add plus 1 to their shooting attack. And finally, there's package 5, which is a melee attack. And if the warrior is in base contact 
when they start their activation, they may only choose package 5. Now let's look at the reaction, which is called take cover. And a warrior can take cover immediately after their opponent has declared an action. When a warrior takes cover, they may move one inch in any direction, but once they've taken cover, they can no longer be activated that round. Warriors also have access to universal actions that they can use in certain missions and situations. These are free to carry out in addition to the action packages, and these are things like pick up, drop, or if the warrior would like to end their activation before they've completed their action package, they can simply pass. Now let's cover the fast, fluid and dynamic movement of rogue warriors. First up, pre-measuring is not allowed. Friendly models can move freely over other friendly models though, but they can't end a movement with their base on another model's base. Whenever they move, they must finish their move on a flat surface that supports their base and allows them to stand freely. Warriors can move over obstacles or terrain less than one inch high as normal, but anything over one inch will slow them down, so measure the distance up, across and down. There's also tricky terrain, so when you set up the battlefield, designate areas, obstacles and features that you think will be tricky terrain, and any time you're going to climb or move across this, the movement distance will be halved, rounding up. And when climbing, a warrior will start and end their climb movement with their base in contact with the terrain feature. Sometimes warriors won't be able to move, and that's when they're pinned. Use a dice to represent a pin marker, and they can only be pinned with one pin marker at a time. Once pinned, a warrior cannot move during their next activation. And when they've carried out their next activation, then you remove the pin marker. Now let's look at the different types of movement in more detail. Every warrior has a movement allowance of 5 inches, and perks, expertise and other rules can increase or decrease their MA. When a warrior moves, they'll move up to the distance equal to their movement allowance. If they choose to run, then they can move an additional 1d6 inches. So roll the dice and then move that many inches. Warriors can swim in deep water, and when they do, they'll move at half the movement distance, rounding up. If they end their activation in deep water, they can tread water for free until their next activation, but they can't carry out any other actions, and note that deep water gives light cover. A warrior can jump across open spaces to a maximum distance of 2 inches, and if they've still got part of their MA remaining, the warrior's base just has to touch another piece of terrain and then they can continue the movement. A warrior can also jump out into open spaces and fall. When a warrior falls down any distance of 3 inches or less, they won't suffer any damage. But if they fall down any distance that is more than 3 inches, then they're placed in the prone position and they lose one heart. If a warrior is prone, then they can stand up, but when they stand up, this will come at a cost of 3 inches from their movement allowance. So when they stand up, their movement allowance goes from a 5 down to a 2. The final movement type is a slide, and warriors can slide down ropes, slides or pipes without taking any damage. They must start and end the slide in base contact with the terrain feature. Now we're on to line of sight and cover. And with line of sight, you draw an imaginary line from the top of the attacking warrior's head to any part of the target, but not including its base. If a line can be drawn without crossing any obstruction, then that target is in the line of sight and the attacking warrior can attack them. If it's not obvious that the target is in the line of sight, crouch down to table level and look from directly behind the head of the attacking warrior towards the target. Let's look at cover now, and cover will give targets benefits when they're being attacked with ranged weapons or when an ability is used against them. We've got light cover, and then here, heavy cover. Let's start with light cover, and if any part of a warrior, not including its base, cannot be seen 
because of terrain or another model, that warrior is in light cover, and that means we now have to apply a minus one modifier to the attack roll. If more than 50% of a warrior, not including the base, cannot be seen, because of terrain or another model, that warrior is in heavy cover, and now we have to apply a minus two modifier to the attack roll. If you disagree with the other player about the percentage, then you can simply roll off and the winner decides. Now let's look at shooting attacks. And all shooting attacks made by warriors hit on a four plus. Shooting attacks are modified by light cover with a minus one to the attack roll. Heavy cover, as we've discussed, is minus two to the attack roll. Aiming is plus one to the attack roll. And if the target is within half range, we can also add one to the attack roll. Let's go through the shooting attack sequence now. And first we designate the target of the attack and the weapon the attack will be made with. And don't forget, there are no pre-measures allowed. Next, we measure the range and shoot if the weapon is in range. The attacker rolls the number of dice in the chosen weapon's attack characteristic and then they apply any modifiers from the weapon, cover, aim, half range, or any perks. Each modified result of a four is a hit, and if hit, the target now must carry out the armor save sequence. Let's go through that sequence now. So step one, for each hit, the target will roll one D6. Step two, apply any modifiers, and then step three, apply the results, and on a roll of one or two, that warrior will take one damage and lose a heart. On a result of three or four, the warrior is pinned and can't move for their next activation. But on a roll of five or six, the warrior's armor protects them from the hit and nothing happens. One last thing on shooting is that warriors can shoot targets who are in base contact, but if they miss, each miss automatically hits the friendly warrior. The friendly warrior does not roll an armor save. Instead, they'll automatically take damage. Now we're on to the final part of this video, which is melee attacks. So let's go through the melee attack sequence and warriors must be in base contact with an enemy model to make a melee attack. Each warrior will start with a melee dice pool. The starting dice pool is five attack dice. You'll add dice and modifiers from perks and special rules. Now on to the melee attack sequence. In step one, we designate the target of the attack and the weapon the attack will be made with. Then the attacker will receive one extra attack dice to add to their dice pool. At this point, we'll add any other modifiers too. The attacker and target roll all the dice in their dice pool and they must be rolled against the same target. Now we'll apply any modifiers and re-rolls, and then the attacker and target will line up their dice next to each other from highest down to lowest and compare the modified results. Working down the line from highest to lowest, count how many dice each warrior lost. For each loss, the warrior suffers one damage, all results are counted and all damage is applied, even if a warrior is taken out. Here's another example. The attacker red and the target green have rolled the following dice results. The attacker in red suffers two damage and the target in green suffers three damage. One of the results was a draw, so that's placed to the side. Warriors in base contact with the target can give them combat assists. The target can add one dice to their melee dice pool for each target friendly warrior in base contact with them. The attacker can also add one dice to their dice pool for each attacker friendly warrior in base contact with the target. In this example, the attacker has got a friendly model in base contact, so they get plus one. In this example, the target has got two target friendly models in base contact with them, so they'll get plus two to their dice pool. And finally, here's a target friendly and an attacker friendly, both in base contact with the target, 
So both the attacker and the target get plus one dice to their dice pool. That's covered the key concept and the basic core rules of the game. Now it's time to work through the mission section. So come and join me for the next part in this series where I'll break down all the rules for creating your own missions and starting one. That's included in the book. I also recommend you check out the video on how to assemble a team where I go through every step of that process. Super fun, my favourite part of the game. And we'll also have a look at perks and weapons in detail. When you know how to assemble a team, you've gone through the core rules now and soon you'll design a mission. You'll have everything you need to know to play Rogue Warriors. There's lots more videos available, including the introduction. What is Rogue Warriors? I've also done a book overview for the core book. And finally, there's the book overview for Tiger Blood, which is a narrative campaign. And this is a big part of Rogue Warriors. You've got the core rules and then a series of narrative campaigns that introduce you to a storyline that's played out in six missions. If you're a fan of the 1990s Navy SEALs movie with Charlie Sheen, you'll love this game. It's all centred around a special ops team that goes up against a team of terrorists to recover some Stinger missiles. The weapons are customised, as is the gear, so it brings it in line with the story. And there's also some additions to play in a narrative campaign as you build a platoon and you've got some more perks available to your warriors. If you'd like to find out more about Rogue Warriors, then the link to my website is down below. You can find the PDF and the paperback versions of both the main game and the expansions. And there are a load of blog posts with lots more information about the game. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyed it. If you did, it'd be great if you hit the like button. Subscribe as well to keep up to date with all the news for Rogue Warriors and our other games. But for now, thanks so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters for helping me keep going with these regular videos. You'll find there you'll be getting all sorts of perks, including lots of different expansions and supplements for all our games like Rogue Warriors, Population Z, Weekend Warriors, Lunaria Chronicles and more. We'd love to see you there. There's a link down below where you can find out more information. <laughs>